uh, is Zachary Fox, who comes from the School of Biomedical Engineering. His advisor is Brian Munsky, and the title of his presentation is Biochemical Noise, Transforming Obstacles into Opportunities. The famous statistician George Box said, all models are wrong, but some are useful. And when models are useful, they have this sort of magical quality. They allow us to predict the future. So some useful models, for example, are the ones that run apps on our cell phones, the ones that help us put satellites into orbit, and perhaps most importantly, the one that tells us what show to watch next on Netflix. Um, however, it turns out that uh, this is something that's really hard to do in biology, and that's what I'm interested in doing. So for a long time, it was thought that the variability in biology was sort of a nuisance, a source of noise. However, recently, it's turned out that this variability is fundamental to biological function. Consider somebody with a bacterial infection. And they're treated with antibiotics. All of the bacteria seem to have died. And then a couple of weeks later, the infection comes screaming back. What happened? Well, what can happen is that just by random chance, one or two bacteria in a million have entered a dormant state when they shouldn't have. And when they're in the storm and state, they don't get hit by antibiotics, and then they can repopulate the colony. So how can we model this kind of bacterial resistance or this random processes in biology? Well, imagine I had a, a, a randomly shuffled deck of cards, and I asked you, what's the card on top? Well, you'd have a 1 in 52 chance of getting that right. However, if I asked you, what's the probability that the card on the top of the deck is an ace, a king, a red card, so on and so forth, you could probably think for a second and tell me exactly what that probability is. And it wouldn't change if I shuffled the deck. The probabilities would stay the same. This is the approach that we take to modeling randomness or variability in biology. So if I had such a model for the bacteria, what, what could I use that for? Well, I can use it to simulate, say, thousands of potential experiments in my computer, saving thousands of dollars and man hours in the lab. And then I can suggest to the experimentalist, hey, these are the two, three experiments you should try. And this is exactly the kind of analysis that I've developed. This uh, analysis is the only analysis that sort of takes into account all the variability that's observed in your data and your model and combines them together. And when we think about noise in a larger sense, it opens a lot of doors to new biological analyses that weren't possible before. We're able to look at two proteins as they're being created in a live cell under a microscope and tell them apart just by their fluctuations over time. And we've used, um, we've used <laughs> uh, biological data with high variability to actually reduce the number of millions of possible models that could be used to fit data down to a finite set, which means that we're closer to building predictive, useful models. So to append uh, George Box's famous saying, saying, it's not just that all models are wrong. All models, analyses, and experiments are wrong in some way. But if we combine them in just the right way, they can be useful. Thanks.